Hello, welcome to today's video. I've been working on the high current wiring for the bidirectional book boost converter. I've got uh, connectors on here now. So this would be the uh, battery pack coming in. Red's positive, blue is negative. I didn't have a black Anderson power pole connector, so that's what we ended up with. Won't be confused with anything, I guess. Uh, you can see uh, the ground comes in here to our main ground terminal, and then that goes onto this capacitor. Ground runs along over to here to this bus bar, uh, goes through the IGBT, this capacitor, and then out to the other connector here. So this would be the output or input, depending on which direction it's going. High voltage side, low voltage side. Got a two gauge cable on the low voltage side, so this will be 48-ish volts coming in, and this will be uh, 48 to 500 volts out at a lower current. Um, I guess we go backwards here. So here's the high voltage coming out goes through a current sensor, which is currently just floating in the breeze. I'll have to wire that up. Uh, goes to this contactor. And then we get a little jumper here to the high voltage rail. And the uh, gate driver, which was in a previous video, runs the IGBT, which is down there. And then on the other side, we have um, from this connect pin right here, which is the common point on the IGBT. There's uh, two IGBTs in there. And that comes out to the inductor, goes through the inductor over to this common rail, which has got the uh, uh, input capacitor on there, and comes across to this contactor, and then out to positive terminal. So now that all the high voltage, or high voltage slash, oh, yep, and there's also another current sensor here, so I can measure the input and output. And if you recall from the last video, here's a little, my crude hand-drawn schematic here and uh, this is actually kind of backwards because we're actually the 48 volts is actually this side and the high voltage is this side but you can see current's going to come in here we've got the little contactor got the capacitor inductor and what we'll do is um, to boost convert we will turn this MOSFET on we got current coming out of the battery through the inductor back here to ground and we'll store energy in the inductor when we turn this guy off, we can't go that way anymore, so we got to come up through here, and we'll convert that to a higher voltage, and then that goes out. And the opposite is true when we're running in buck mode. We will take a higher voltage here, and by turning this IGBT on, we will connect this. Eh, which way does it go? Yeah, this through there to ground, and so we'll charge up this capacitor. And then when we turn this IGBT off, current stored in the inductor will continue to flow up through here, maintaining our circuit. And then we PWM that guy to transfer energy from this side to that side. And we PWM this guy to transfer energy from this guy to this guy side. And that allows me to check battery chargers, which are going to pump the energy this way, and motor controllers, which will draw current this way, but then when they regen, they pump current that way. So yeah, <clears throat> getting pretty close to getting done. Um, few more things that need to be added. I need, uh, uh, as you can kind of see on here, I got the current sensors in. I don't have any way to sense voltage, so that'll be the next stage. Um, I also need to have the precharger, precharge circuit across this guy, and a precharge circuit across this guy, so we don't have any major inrush current. And uh, those will be, on this side it'll be a resistor and IGBT, and on this side it'll be a resistor and a MOSFET, and then this controller board, or this is the DMFC adapter, it's been repurposed. We'll control those, It'll, it's already got built-in stuff to control contactors, so we'll reuse that, and we have uh, isolated uh, analog channels on here, which we'll use to measure the 48 volt rail and the uh, output rail, and uh, I'll actually probably measure both sides, so we'll measure from here to ground from here to ground and from here to ground so I can monitor the precharge and check for uh, short you know if I've got you know voltage over here but th this is always dead shorted then I know my device under test is bad and then I can go look in there or if it's open you know so we could do some little bit of diagnostics uh, same with that over here I want to have the uh, 48 volt so I can know when everything comes up to the so if I look at the battery coming in I know what voltage it's sitting at, and I, as this guy precharges up to the same value, then I can turn on the contactor. Uh, I could also do rate 
change. Uh, so as the DVDT gets very small, then you can turn it on. So there's a bunch of different ways. So I haven't figured out, really decided what I'm going to do with that, how I'm going to do that yet. Uh, now I got the little current sensor here. We'll get that over to there uh, for the heat sink. And i uh, going to run, uh, I've got power. This is plugs in over here, runs the uh, uh, isolated converters on there to generate the uh, isolated power supplies necessary for the uh, gate drivers that are little, little black pieces, SIPs here. Uh, there was another video previously on that. And, uh, oh, and, you know, this used to be a three-phase motor controller, so I had three-phase coming out, and this fit perfectly, so I was able to put my antenna in here. This uh, antenna actually will plug into, down here's the Wi-Fi module, there's a little connector down in there for where the antenna plugs into. So when this is all boxed up, uh, then I can connect to it with the cell phone or the tablet to monitor the voltages and everything. So I'm still planning on doing that. And in addition, I've got my big um, uh, VFD display here, which is really nice. And um, I'm not sure where I'm going to put that yet. So um, I think this would be really cool just to have a static display on there. It has voltage and current. and what the battery set point is and everything. So we'll see what happens on that if I actually am um, able to install that. And let's see what else. Uh, so yeah, I just gotta get everything wired up. Oh, uh, I got, uh, in case you're wondering, there is no fuse in here. And the reason there's no fuse is it's right here. And uh, it's a 200, 200 amp uh, fuse. What is it, 170 volts DC. So it'll be perfect for the 48 volt system. This is going to go in the battery pack, so if anything shorts out in here, it'll just pop the fuse over in the battery pack, or if something happens to the connector, or, you know, wherever. So I'm not going to put a fuse in, in this unit itself. It'll actually be located in the battery pack. And the outputs should be, we, we've got current sensors. These are about 50 kilohertz resolution, so you should be able to detect things. Um, yeah, so I think we'll be okay on that front. Uh, I still need to get a 48 volt to 12 volt uh, DC to DC converter. Um, I kind of forgot and stopped bidding on them on eBay, so I need to get a little quarter brick. should fit underneath this capacitor down in there. I probably should have installed it before I wired it up, but I don't have it. That'll supply the 12 volts that this guy needs to run. And we'll take 48, convert to 12 to run this guy, and then this generates all the supplies it needs. Uh, including over here everything and then this big empty space here is uh, I got to get a big uh, power resistor to bolt in and that will be with a uh, IGBT to run that and that'll be um, oops, this side here this will allow me to discharge uh, safely discharge uh, things and put a load on uh, if if, say I'm checking a battery charger, I can burn up a lot of the energy as heat in that power resistor and while also charging up the uh, you know 48 volt battery pack. So that should work out pretty well and um, yeah I think uh, that's it. This is a nice supposedly quick video. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.